Good evening, everyone. Uh, we're going to call this meeting of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board to order for Monday, March 18th, 2019. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as chair. The other members from my right are Rob Goodwin, Kevin O'Connell, Deb Markowitz, Meredith Crandall, staff, Kate McCarthy, Ryan Kane, Tom Kester. So first order of business is approval of the agenda. Does anybody have any amendments to the agenda or does someone wish to move for the agenda as printed? So moved. Motion by Kevin. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Kate. Uh, all those in favor of the agenda as printed, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. Uh, no comments from the chair this evening. We'll move straight to the approval of the minutes. We have two sets of minutes. The first one are from February 19th. Uh, myself, Kevin, Kate, Ryan, and Rob are all eligible to vote. Does anyone wish to amend the minutes or to move their approval? I'll move approval of the minutes as drafted. For February 19th? For February 19th. Motion by Ryan. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kevin. All those eligible to vote, which would be myself, Kevin, Kate, Ryan, and Rob, uh, in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. They are approved. Excellent. Moving through very quickly. The second uh, set of minutes are from March 4th. Myself, uh, Deb, Tom, Ryan, and Rob are all eligible to vote for the March 4th minutes from our last meeting. Do I have a motion to approve or amend? Uh, move to approve as written. Okay, motion by Deb. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor who are eligible to vote, please raise your right hand. We have minutes for March 4th as well. Great. Thank you all very much. That brings us to our first item of business for the evening, which is 19 Pearl Street. This is a final subdivision plan review. Uh, Mr. Noir. So if you'll just state your name for the record, and then I will put you in under oath. My name is Samuel Nuara. Okay, and you're here as the applicant. Is that correct, please? Okay. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Very good. Do you... Uh, actually, let's have Meredith... Do you want to start us off? Yeah. Just give us maybe a, a refresher. I, I think we all remember discussing it, but it might be helpful to just refresh the application as well as any significant changes you as staff would like to direct our attention to. Yep. Um, so this is a fairly basic um, two-lot subdivision in full on Pearl Street. This is the final application. Um, and during sketch plan, the major questions that we asked the applicant to come back about were um, underground utilities and landscaping for screening in between the new parcel and both the parcel is being subdivided off from as well as the closest neighbor. Um, so that, there's, there's a couple of issues like that, uh, around that brought up in the staff report. Um, the other update that you should be aware of is that a survey was completed. The original parcel is actually much larger than when we originally looked at it. Um, and then the only really complication from that was that the front property boundary wasn't quite as close to the sidewalk as we originally thought. Um, so the front porch um, is actually in that front setback, but I've flagged it in here, but it is my understanding of uh, previously existing nonconformity, so right. it should be fine. It is flagged in there in red, though, just as a highlight because it's something different. Well, and let me ask this question, Meredith, just so I understand, if the if we grant the subdivision, it doesn't alter the existing nonconformity. Correct. Nor would it uh, open the door for what's labeled as lot one to have a similar non-conforming. They'd exactly. have to follow the front setback. Exactly. There's the, the, the subdivision isn't going to create increase any non-conformity or, like you said, open any door for lot one to do the same. Great. Mr. Marar, was there anything you wish to uh, add? Um, I, I think uh, I did my best to answer. I mean, the, the major bone of contention is obviously the power, the, the utilities. Right. Um, because I looked into that quite extensively, and it's... <laughs> 
it's a, uh, for many reasons. First of all, the, that pole is 44 years old. They don't dig to anything that's 30 years old or older. So that would be replaced. That side of the street, which is what the south side, north side. So the entire neighborhood, the poles are on the north side of the street. Because I know it was presented as an option to possibly put a pole, run it overhead over the street, and then underground it from there. Okay. Which I guess is technically possible, um, but I'm not sure what that accomplishes as far as at that point, 60 or 70 percent of the line is then already overhead. It creates an anomaly where the, that's the only pole on the south side of the street in the neighborhood. Um, I had Green Mountain Power come do, you know, shortly after the other meeting, I had them come out and do a, a site visit to kind of run through all the options. One of them was directional boring technology, which isn't an option in this case because the they indicated that it has to be uh, four feet underground and encased in four inches of concrete, which they can't accomplish if they, there's no way to accomplish that without digging up the sidewalks in the street. Right, um, well does it, and has Public Works weighed in on that option at all? Because it seems to me we're going through the yeah, sewer we, system as yeah, well. Yeah, putting it under the street just isn't feasible. Isn't feasible. Um, and as Sam says, if you, you know, then you're running the power for a few feet underground on the new parcel. Right. I, I even asked them actually if they if there's some because I know in some older neighborhoods there's like attached to other houses and run. I asked if there's any way I can because I own the house now. <laughs> Is yeah. there any way I can? And they don't do that anymore. I don't know when that went out of fashion, fashion or law or whatever. But she said that attaches it you permanently to the existing. They just, it's not something they do anymore. So what did Green Mountain Power recommend as, as far as attaching power to the house? Just running it from? Standard, yeah. Across the street? There's one, there's that large tree um, in the corner there, and the pole, the way the pole is situated, I don't know, I forget what the technical term is, but you have to run it along the line for, you know, 15 mm -hmm. or 20 feet and then across. But they have, she said, we're not even close to the span that, you know, they can go 200 something feet, you know, we're, we're like less than half of what to meet those requirements just to run it down the line and then across. Mm -hmm. um, she said they could hook it up in two days for less than $1,000. <laughs> Or dig up the entire street. Yeah. Or, yeah, I, I actually had an excavator. I mean, I went, I, I tried to do my best, you know, to to present, mm -hmm. because it just, n not only the, they have to, they can't use that pole, so you'd have to order a new pole, uh, which is $3,500 and a three month wait time because of the age of the pole. Uh, you'd have to dig up both sidewalks in the street. And between the pole and the excavator, it's at almost $30,000 minimum, barring any water or sewer or, and then, you know, Green Mountain, both of them actually indicated to me that the, you know, obviously the streets never going to be the same. Right. Um, I'm not sure when they were, you know, when that street was redone or whatever, but it, it just, from uh, it, uh, their opinions were um, thoroughly against it. Okay. And just for, we're sort of backing our way into, I think what you're asking for is essentially a variance from that requirement. Yeah, I wasn't sure um, of all the legal whatever. I don't know if you have some exemptions. Some, I know a variance is ultimately possible. I don't know what's the, uh, I, I don't know what your options are as far as that is well, concerned. It, it's really, I don't think we have to do an official variance or waiver. Okay. The language in the clause says that all utilities shall be located underground unless prevented by ledge or other physical conditions. Okay. So I, I think it's the board basically make, having to make a determination that this is one of those other physical conditions. It's also a, right. a discussion point on whether or not the board wants the planning department to try and come up with some clarifications for these subdivision provisions that don't really make sense for one yeah. lot in fill for subdivisions future. for future. Yeah. If this is one of those troublesome or, ones or that just doesn't make sense. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, 
or we can set the precedent by taking that right that language yeah. and, and, and using it uh, we, build, we we begin to build up a uh, uh, case history yep there's that it's also but also just when new zoning administrators come in not that I'm anticipating that anytime in the future but having something that if you wanted to put in the regulations where there's a little I, I don't know if you know, whether or not they keep coming back here or not well it's so just a question to think about go ahead, yeah, I, I mean we've seen some sketch plan review for these one lot infill subdivisions so far but haven't seen many of them through yet mm -hmm. and so I would prefer to see more examples of who is looking for mm -hmm. it, how this applies before we make any requests to the oh, planning commission? Yep. Yeah. No, but no, and this was just, like it just could a be thought. like flagged in pencil. Yeah, uh, just for just now. Th just I think it's thing. worth. Yeah. I think it's worth flagging um, whether we make it a formal recommendation to planning commission or not. I think you're right, Kate. That you know, this is one out of you know one of the first whether this is going to be a repeat issue. It sounds like. And, and I agree with Kevin as well that you know there's a way of, of fixing this get based on the language, and I think this fits within the physical conditions. I mean, I think this would even qualify for a larger variance, um, you know, just given the testimony we've received, um, and that I would elicit some additional. But um, I can't imagine at the same time two things: one, that this is an isolated incident. There are many streets in Montpelier existing where power lines are strung on one side of the street and if there's infill on another how that power would be run to those new lots uh, in those infill projects i suspect this may be this is a problem that is likely to repeat it doesn't seem to be that unique of a set of circumstances and the second thing is i'm not quite clear why the sub why the bylaws have that in in cases of infill i can see with new construction that is that generally tends to be the new standard is running power lines underground and so it might be helpful eventually i mean if we difference between maybe raising it formally or penciling it if if the planning commission did have new construction in mind new subdivision sort of uh, new development as opposed to infill and whether that should be distinguished down the line um yeah. Okay. When, when if we do carry that forward, I would want us to have a discussion about how we define infill. I don't know. I don't remember if it's in the definitions, mm -hmm. um, but we've been using it very loosely, um, including for big two-acre lots up in the Town Hill Road area as infill. And I think we're talking about something very specific here, which is an existing neighborhood. So right. that's my little note for the yeah, for the future. When thank you for bearing with us through that thought process. I just wanted to, I think, moving forward, thank the applicant for the due diligence and yes. the information provided. I think that that is uh, helpful for going forward when we cross it, the information that we may need to come to an appropriate decision. So thank you. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to do that. <laughs> no, I think that that does helpful. And just to be clear, the power lines run along the north side of Pearl Street. Mm -hmm. Do all the houses along the south side have their power lines mm -hmm. running across Pearl Street above? Yes. Okay. So, I mean, this is one amongst many houses that will have its power lines strung across Pearl Street, in other words. Many. All, all of them are. There's no poles on that side. I mean, you could right. underground. If you were, if it was on the other side, I actually thought about it because there is, the gentleman that has the house on the corner has quite a big lot that I can imagine, you know, there's only so many lots around. And I can imagine from that same pole I'm talking about, somebody someday might want to, but it's right there and they can just underground from right there this mm -hmm. is being if you're on the other side there's really no way to do it without you know destroying the, the streets and the sidewalk okay is there anyone here to be heard on this application just checking all right very good so uh i think that that is certainly the major issue and it seems like we have some consensus here unless anyone had any other questions that they wish to ask about this um, so what I know one of the concerns that we had was about landscaping um, what is the proposal well at this time I, I don't there's not much I can say with much specificity because 
um, we have to, I mean, ultimately, obviously, it's to build. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to want some kind of, uh, but it, everything is going in steps. So it's like, you know, I we'll have the architect, you have the builders, you have these meetings. You can only go forward so fast with so many things. And actually, just for the first time, because now we're getting to the end of the drawings and, you know, the actual dimensions and this and that, and I, I staked it out. Uh, with just some garden stakes, so I could just get an idea, okay, this is what they're proposed, here's the setbacks, here's the... So I'm not sure how um, I can specifically landscape it now anyway, mm -hmm. because we were talking about window placements, whether it's, you know, moving the entire thing forward or back five feet even, would, you know, not that you could do much at this point in the year anyway, but even if you could, you may just change your mind six months from now when it's actually getting finished anyway. Um, I'm not sure how much I can speak to the specifics. Sure. The only issues that, obviously that big tree up there is not getting touched. All, all throughout the back of the property, there's one tree in the middle, um, like directly in the middle of the new lot that will have to get removed because it would be in the living room. But, um, other than that, the entire backside of our property now and the neighboring properties, there's, it's obviously not on the survey, but the, the Regina that's right here, the back of her property, and then backing up to um, the Levy's property is all trees and bushes. And I mean, in the, when it's grown in in the summer, you can't even see the houses up on the top of the hill or... The only one really is going to be the two existing directly on the other side. Right. They're going to be mainly affected, and we'll have to see um, at that point well, you know, what. But I, I guess that mostly depends on the placement of the house and windows and so on, doors. And I'm, looking I'm not sure I can address that with that much specificity at the moment. But it does talk about, and uh, let me just... Go to ours. So page eleven of your staff report outlines. Yeah, um, I'm just. It, of course, it doesn't. I'm looking for the actual site. Um, oh, when you get to state plan? No, just within the development standards of the subdivision standards. The three five. I think it's. Is it, is it, yeah. So. One of what we're required to look at, and um, is for for landscaping, and I think it's three five or six. Is it F? Is it F? Yep, page three dash ninety two. There we go. That's why. Okay. Yeah, it talks about landscaping. <clears throat> it says the applicant shall design the subdivision to maximize the preservation of existing mature vegetation and provide additional landscaping, which may be installed when the lots are subsequently developed as necessary to, one, maintain and provide privacy for both adjoining property owners and between lots within the subdivision, two, to enhance the appearance of street frontage and shade trees and sidewalks, three, to maintain and or, or establish vegetated buffers along waterways and other natural areas, and four, to utilize green, green stormwater infrastructure practices. So I would suggest that three is not an issue here because you're not along a waterway. Um, but one, two, and four are. Um, and so I understand, you know, what you've, what you've essentially created is another sort of deeper than wide lot that's consistent with the other lots. Um, but, you know, as you've already said, <coughs> you're looking at where there would have to be some buffer between the new house and your existing <coughs> house because those are going to be fairly close together mm -hmm. as well as between the new house and the, the house right next to it because that's also going to need a little bit of a buffer. Mm -hmm. um, and you're saying that the, the trees that, as exist, the big tree in front um, and the trees in the back aren't going to change. There might be one tree in the middle There's of the lot the middle, that's yeah. going to have to come out because... That's it's where the right house the is going to go. Um, so I don't, you know, I think what, what we're looking at 
is whether this design, and I'll ask the other board members if they, what, the, what their feelings are, is whether we need to have a greater design for the landscaping. I mean, it's obvious, you know, based on the testimony, where some of this landscaping is going to have to go when the house is built and developed. Is that enough for us at this stage? And then when the house is built, I mean, part of it is, of course, you're not going to be able to control. Are you selling this lot? Or are you, you building on it? The one we're going to build on? Yeah. You're no, gonna... we're going to live there. Okay. And sell the existing house. Oh, okay. Go ahead. But, um, leaving aside the current plans for the lot, what we could do to ensure that the subdivided land is developed properly is... I, I think we've received evidence that the max that preservation of existing mature vegetation is being maximized mm -hmm. with the two trees that you're able to keep. Um, there could be put on the subdivision permit a condition that says, you know, additional landscaping will be provided as necessary to do items one, three, and four, um, pending the design of the final. Yeah, I guess that's building. just what I'm. What I'm confused is when that is it at this stage or is it at the it would be the next stage. stage. Mm -hmm. It would be at the yeah. next stage. The right. bylaws required anyway, you yeah. know, to come back to landscaping. So I think, yeah. right. I think, uh, what Kate is suggesting is is a way to accommodate your reasonable need to yeah. put it off. Yeah, and it, it also ensures that the subdivision itself is has all the pieces and parts it needs. If for some reason you choose not to develop the lot and sell it to someone else. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the specific no, get, dots on the map why. will be with the house permit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I totally understand. And I mean, I have to, you know, barring some whatever where we end up not living there, if it goes forward like we plan, obviously I, I have I to, to live there with too. these people too. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. like, right. you know, it's in my, just from a selfish perspective, it's in my best interest to, to have it. Um, but I, again, I don't, I'm not sure how much of that I can address at this moment. Yeah. No, and I, I don't so think we'll it's, it. I don't think it's reasonable to, to require you to have a fully fledged landscaping plan at this stage because you don't have your house plans yet and it's not required by a subdivision. Mm -hmm. And I think 90% of what you need to do you've done, which is to show, you know, you've created a design that seems to be consistent with the existing landscaping. And it's really just this next 10%, which is to sort of commit to what logically should follow, which is mm -hmm. that there will have to be additional landscaping consistent with both our landscaping standards and as we've identified where yeah. you're going to need those buffers between the houses. Yeah. So maybe I could clarify that when I'm suggesting putting a condition on the subdivision permit, I don't mean that that condition would need to be fulfilled before you get the permit. Right. It would mean that the condition would need to be fulfilled in order to maintain adherence to the permit right. once you build. Right. So if I was unclear about well, that, no, I just wanted I, to it, it makes sense that. too because I'm actually just thinking forward now. I, you know, at best case scenario, if we can get this through this year, you know, it's not going to get built and finished until the end of the year, and you're not going to be able to landscape anything in December anyway. So I guess a lot of that will have to come the following spring. Or so, mm -hmm. As long as there's a design for it, I guess. If yeah, I mean that's the part of the part of the zoning plan. permit would be to have a landscaping plan in there, but right. you wouldn't have to. Implement. Effect, yeah, implement that landscaping plan gotcha. until the expiration of the zoning permit. So you basically have two years. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, actually, just as a quick question, maybe you know, what is it, like let's say <clears throat> in this case, if I wanted to put a tree the opposite of what this one is now, on the, the, uh, the big one that's marked on the... On the corner? At the end of the new lot, yeah, next to uh, Regina's property. Mm -hmm. If you put one on the other side, what? just so I know in my head, I guess I would need to look up your landscaping regulations, but, because I, there's like something like that, I would need to think about now with the driveway and the, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but I well, could definitely put a tree there. Come, come see me at the, after March 27th, and we'll see what the city council passed for 
revamped landscaping regulations. Oh, new. So give me a little time. Well, well, it's, it, is, it is great. You don't want to be it's, under the yeah. current landscape. It's designed landscape. Really? to solve the problem. It's like per, yeah, oh, okay, per square yeah. foot. You'd have to have like probably 30 shrubs and, yeah. and five trees or something. Yeah, so, well, so I have 100 trees wait, on my property as it is. Wait and get in touch with me, and Perfect. once the, once the new landscaping <laughs> regs are adopted, we'll we'll reevaluate. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so that provides flexibility on landscaping. Yep. Great. No, I think that makes sense. Yep. Yeah. Oh, all right. Um, so, and we've talked about the front porch. Mm -hmm. That our understanding is it's a pre-existing, non-conforming. We're not changing that or altering it and nothing in the pre-existing non-conforming porch is going to affect on lot, what would now be lot two will affect how lot one is developed. Uh, were there any other issues that people wish to discuss on this particular subdivision? Yeah. Otherwise. No, I have one question. Oh, yes. Um, so this little narrow, tiny area on the mm -hmm. south side of the we give an explanation on what, what what's there. <laughs> oh, so, okay. That belongs to the family behind there. Okay. They just don't know that. Um, so this drawing, where the back, the back of that. So there's that little chunk, right? That's missing. <laughs> that's marked. So between the back property line, and let's say that tree, about. Halfway through there is where the slope starts. Mm -hmm. That slope goes up about equally as far on the other side. So it's maybe, that slope is, I don't know, maybe 20 feet, let's say, and it slopes up 10 or 15 feet. The surveyor, so apparently where my garage is now was a barn. It was all one property, and she thinks there was some drive up from because that's a higher, and when they broke it off, there was something at the time that made this little piece of property go with the way it was divided, which she can't tell now, obviously. It was either an error or there was something at the time that it was necessary for them to keep that little piece. So I went and talked to them, but I, they, I talked to their kids, actually. They weren't at home at the time, but I'm waiting because I want them to, you know, the surveyor, that was the first thing. She said, see if you can get this cleaned up so when we record it, it's... Because they don't even know they own it. It's sure. it's separated by 20-some-odd feet of full-grown trees, you know, but it's officially belongs to them. Yeah, I just didn't know if there was so, any structure or anything there that... No, uh, it was a really weird... Yeah. She, was, she okay. knocked on the door and was like, hey, you got to look at this. <laughs> <laughs> like, for some reason, you don't own this little... It's like, uh, you know, three by... 10 feet stretch behind the tree and then it's all hill up to the and then they have fence on the back of their property so they don't even know they own it an anomaly of some yeah sort. and she wasn't 100 percent why sure why because it goes back i mean that plan goes back to 1901 that she was referencing so it was a little unclear what that was there for well this is in the meadow so this that, that is a small neighborhood yeah i mean it's it's but it's also relatively i mean Compared to some neighborhoods, it was relatively recently developed mm. for my Montpelier standards. Plan, I would say. What? I'd say it was more uniformly planned. Than yes. Well, well and the reason true. she said, because when she took the dimension, the dimensions of the old barn were listed, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they go like up to their property, so she, and it's a slope, so it was obvious that it only maybe that third floor met that part of their property, and then the first and second floor were on our lot of time. I don't know. She right. didn't know why, but hmm. she has to point it out because that's her job. Okay. But I'm trying to get that cleared up before it gets recorded, but I don't think there's any think issue. Mm, yeah, not, not, right? not any zoning issue um, unless they come for an application <laughs> to use it. Um, I should have them start mowing it. <laughs> <laughs> Be a nice new name. Yeah. Go talk to Steve Twombly after this, you know. <laughs> no, I'm sure. It'll be um, it's more any other questions? If, if not, anyone have a motion that they wish to make? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I'll move final subdivision plan approval for at 19 Pearl Street with the condition 
that um, within 180 days of the decision, the applicant shall record the final survey plat in the Montpelier Land Records Office per the procedures detailed in Section 4405 of the Zoning Regulations. And as previously discussed by the board, a condition that upon application for a zoning permit to construct a structure on this property, additional landscaping will be delineated as necessary to meet the requirements of Section 3506F of the zoning bylaw. Okay, motion by Kate. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Second by Rob. Any further discussion? Let me just, I don't think it needs to be part of the motion, but it's our understanding that part of this permit is going to be granting um, the, whether we call it variance or waiver or finding that um, the power lines can be strung across overhead uh, Pearl Street to get power to this lot one. Yes. That's the understanding. Thank okay. you. Um, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. You have your subdivision Thank you. permit. Thank it you. will Thank issue, you. there'll be a written decision that will be issued in a few days or maybe a week. It, it'll be a little bit. Yeah. I've got to catch up on a couple of other ones. But yes, I, I have it. I got plenty of I'll memorialize first. all of this. <laughs> okay. I don't get the permit. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to overpromise. Nope, that's okay. Nope, thank you. Nope. Kate's got one, and then I've got another one in the process, and then one more to go, and then I can do this one. Okay, uh, so the next item of business uh, is a couple of things. One is that 213 Main Street, which was scheduled for a final plan review of a two lot subdivision, that's been tabled by the applicant? Yes. Until, do, do they wish to have it tabled? Yes. Okay, yeah, so we need a motion. They had a conflict. Okay. So they wish to have it tabled until April 1st, 2019? Yes. So I will, unless anybody has any questions, entertain a motion. So moved. Uh, motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Tom to table the applicant, the final sub plan, 213 Main Street to April 1st. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. It's been tabled. All right, and the next item of business is Zero Main Street, af directly after 1701 Main Street, and this is an informal review of four new dwelling units, and you must be Jeff Stetter? Yes. yes. Okay. So given that this is an informal review, uh, we're not going to put you under oath. I presume you're just looking for our initial feedback response. Absolutely. Yep, exactly. So, uh, Jeff, I'll open up the floor to you and okay. give, you a give us a brief description and then we'll let, we'll just all chime in as we have questions. Okay, great, great. Um, yeah, so a um, little background. I, I am a licensed architect. I've been practicing for 25 years. Um, I was with Costas Spockman for 23 of those and um, moved on from there. But uh, it's, this is something I've always wanted to do. Always wanted to do my own thing. Okay. <laughs> I designed a lot of that stuff for other people. So um, I've been watching for pieces of property, and this one became available. And I do have a, uh, a purchase and sale agreement on it um, with sort of 90 days vetting period where I can make sure I can do it because it's, it's not an easy piece of property to develop. Um, so the, the for, I can just, I'll just kind of go through. This, these four pages I've got here. Um, you know, obviously, that's the, the piece of property there. It's, uh, you know, slopes. It's a, it's a steeper slope site. Um, and if you go to the, the photos, um, it, it, when you're at the street level, you can't quite tell, but there is actually a level area somewhat at the top that if you look at photo C, that you can kind of see that uh, somewhat level area there. Um, so I'm looking to do four units. I, one, I would live in one, and uh, three very small um, uh, one-bedroom um, homes uh, would be the other the other three units. Um, like a total square footage, we're talking with like three thousand square feet. So it's not a big, you know, for four for four homes. It's it's pretty small, compact development. You have one one building. Um, highly, I'm looking to be highly energy efficient, um, 
net zero ready, uh, probably won't be able to do solar panels right off, um, but hopefully down the road and set it up so that I can add them to the roof. Uh, trying to do as minimal site disturbance as possible. I, I kind of like the, uh, the natural aspect of it, the, the woods. Um, so besides the clearing that would be required for the home, the drive, and septic system, because septic system and water system would be on site in this site. Uh, talked with Tom McCardle and he said there's, I guess the connections are down past the entrance to Murray Road. Mm -hmm. uh, the Murray Hill, yeah, Murray Hill okay. development there. So uh, it's sort of out of out of uh, reach to get to that. Um, so let's see. So then, if you go to page three, to page three. This is this was based on a, on a map that um, Audrey gave me that the red indicates uh, slopes over thirty percent and over. Which um, did you guys not get? We we color? didn't we didn't get color black and white. Some of you oh, yeah some of you got color yeah okay oh okay yeah. did you make the copies? I or made we? copies. Yeah. Oh okay. I was cheap sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah I'm not sure with the black and white you can share it down there. Yeah. That's okay. Oh well it makes a big difference. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, the, so the, the red is the is thirty percent. Yeah, the red and then the 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 sort of bluish gray. That's 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 the area of the red on the piece of property. So that's okay. that's my mm -hmm. area calculation. So if you look oh, at the I see. if you look at the, the the gray areas on the piece of property, mm -hmm. that's the areas that are over thirty percent. Given this particular large scope uh, uh, topography plan, it's it's not a, a you know a high resolution plan. It's mm -hmm. given it ten thousand feet or something. I don't know. Uh, so the the yellow areas the yellow areas are uh, areas that are um, less than 500 square feet, which you can um, deduct from the, the calculations. For this, this is all coming down to a density calculation. I assume you guys probably are yep. thinking that. So, so once you do this this calculation, the total area and so forth, uh, I really only, as it currently stands, I currently only have enough density for three units. Uh, hmm. I need. Um, I have 28,000, the, 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 the area that is less than 30% slope is 28,000 square feet. I need 9,000 square feet per unit, so I can get three units in there. I really want to get four, and I need to understand the, the new zoning changes. I know there's some happening immediately, but there's some also that are happening. Well, there's no guarantee. Right, there's right, oh yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, no, no guarantee that the buildable area is going to calculation change. is going to change. Right. What's the time frame on that? You, uh, <laughs> I mean, just roughly. I know. Um, I know. Planning commission is working. If you working, say June, I'll expect October. Mm -hmm. so. That sounds about right. Yeah. Is that? It, it really. That's the planning commission is still working through those, okay. um, and changes to the buildable area would be part of that whole package. Okay. Um, so it has to finish getting through planning commission and then go before city council. So. You know, the hope is in front of city council June. So Meredith, but that's become separated from, it, so the um, the landscaping piece is moving along, going to city council right. at the end of this month, and the buildable area pieces are separate. Right. So lands. Right. So landscaping and slopes mm. are whatever for city council, for it could be voted on and decided as of the 27th next week. Buildable area calculation, which has to do with slopes, has been separated from the larger slopes provision changes okay. because the Planning Commission could not re could reach consensus. Okay. So, so those you, are two, no, two no, things that would reach yeah. unanimity. Yeah, sorry. Right. Yeah. Unan yeah. yeah, unanimity. They could reach consensus. Right, sorry. They couldn't, they couldn't reach unanimity. Yes. yes. Sorry. And Wrong word. This may Very be, important word. <laughs> this may be something that's, that's worthwhile we can give you our feedback, but we're constrained by the existing rules. Right. I understand. This, some of this that you're talking about, I think, is good to put before the Planning Commission, because as you heard from the previous discussion, you know, they've made a lot of changes, and a lot of times they have a certain set of facts in their mind driving their policies and making them aware of other circumstances or other situations may allow them to start to um, believe uh, 
enlarge their their scope of of thinking about these 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 type of parcels letting people, you know letting them know this this type of parcel exists your needs are x and you know it makes sense to allow for this kind of development for all the reasons you're starting to articulate to us because they're the ones who can actually start to change some of the policies and rules that we then have to enforce so um, you'd recommend going before the planning commission then is that Okay. I yes. think it's I think it's good Definitely. to make them aware. They need to see case examples of sure. how this is really impacting. Okay. Yeah. What's I mean, going they, on in the city. they have the unenviable position of trying to think of this in the abstract, and the more right. concrete you can make it for them, I think, the better. Okay. So, um, is this in the Murray Hill neighborhood? Of backside, yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that the tech? Is that technically the part of the zoning it falls in? Is that neighborhood? Uh, it's oh. residential 9,000. Yeah, and then within that, we've got a whole bunch of neighborhoods. What, what I, I, I honestly, oh, the, the I, I didn't write yes. that down. Okay. What I is don't Murray know. Hill, uh, uh, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. Yeah, um, but I, I did take a peek at it, and I'm pretty sure it's considered. So w within the zoning, we've got the zoning districts, and then we have yeah. neighborhoods within it. Each one has a slightly different character. So right. particularly for a conditional use, which this would be, I think, part of our task is to evaluate the proposal with respect to any impacts it does or doesn't have on the on the character right. is this kind of a small paragraph description yep. kind of a, that's the just one. kind of the general feeling of that area that's, yeah yeah. Okay. yeah so um maybe someone else can corroborate but i think this parcel does fall technically within um murray hill 11-5 so I guess what we'd look at is, is this this is the yeah. description of the neighborhood is this is one of the city's more recent residential developments with single family homes and townhouses accessed by several cul-de-sac streets and a substantial amount of open space proposed land development may feature infill residential development where infrastructure is available and to the extent feasible given the availability and ownership of land in this neighborhood <coughs> um, so when I read that um, I, I noted that infrastructure is not available on this site, um, and it, I would not, I don't know that this would be considered infill in the way that is envisioned by the description. In, in, what was the last sentence that you said? So, so the last sentence. Other than, is some Let me see. Land ownership. Extent or feasible given oh, yeah. the yeah, availability. The extent feasible given the availability and ownership of land in this neighborhood, which suggests to me that this was written with the Murray Hill subdivision. Yeah in mind and yeah. not as much with the adjacent <coughs> parcels that are not part of right. it in mind right um and so this is another thing to mention to the planning commission <clears throat> because they're the ones who envision where the various districts are right good great um, do you know how long this has been like a separate piece of separate parcel uh actually yeah, this survey was done uh, 1970, so I'm assuming. 1970. So it predates the Murray Hill subdivision, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and the, the owners are Calvin Murray and Elsie Murray. Oh. So. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm trying to picture where it is. It's, it's, it's actually, if you're going up Main Street and you yep. pass the Murray Hill's Murray, on the left. The entrance there, yep. and there's the big field there, yep. right? And then there's a line, right when it comes, you can see it actually, there's a line of trees, right? Yep. At the property line, pretty much. And it's right there. It's on the mm -hmm. other side of it. And then if, if, if any of you, is, when you're driving up there on the left, there's like these old foundations and stuff mm -hmm. on the hill. I don't know if anybody remembers mm -hmm. those things. They're up on the left. I think it's like remnants of an old garage maybe or something. Um, that's not on this property, actually. Uh, but that's kind of the end of it. So it, it's, it's 1.17 acres. And it's all wooded right now. Yeah, yeah, for the most yeah. part. It's all, it, I'm wondering if it was uh, pasture at one point mm -hmm. or something, because mm -hmm. all the trees are like mm -hmm. this. The same, yeah. And they're not like, you know, some, some piece of property, you see them where the, the trees are falling down and stuff, and so the soil is eroding, but they're all like straight. You know, they're all just like new, you know, 30, 40 year old growth. Mm -hmm. Another layer you could look at is um, whether there are any natural resources that appear on this parcel um, that are part of the natural resources map for the 
of the city? No? I don't think there is. There, there are no resources. There's no map. a lot of maps. You know, okay. can see. Hit right. that layer, hit that layer. Nothing oh, so you played up. with that. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. That's a good research resource. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, the uh, Vermont Geographical Information. Vermont Center for Geographical yeah, Information. Yes, that. Oh, yeah. my gosh. What a great resource. Ooh. It's amazing. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, I mean, so, so you get to the end of it. The, the last year is sort of the, the basic site plan. Um, you know, again, the intent would be to keep as much of the woods as possible. I'm, I'm thinking, I am I'm working with Don Marsh, um, uh, civil engineer on uh, site planning, and we, we, we'll be getting a more accurate survey. But in, in reality, though, this actually seems somewhat close. Um, so, uh, and so the, the drive, it's a, it's a steeper drive getting up to trying to get to that point about 10 feet below that level area, uh, that photo uh, B or C, whatever you want to say. Um, and that would be sort of a, the first floor. It'd be sort of a walkout kind of uh, relationship with parking underneath at that, that first level and the, the foundation of the building would, would serve as uh, a retaining to, to hold that slope up for the Because <coughs> part me. of that was such a, a steeper slope, part of just getting the cars turned around and being able to go back out is a ba major site restriction. Um, so, but, but you know, it, uh, amazingly, it, it did, did grade out relatively well um, without a lot of uh, crazy, uh, you know, steep slope, steeper slopes um, or, or major retaining. So that was good. Um, yeah, what else can I tell you? So this is one building that would then have these units within it, right? Right, right, yeah. The footprint would be, well, the footprint would be bigger because it's, so if, if you can imagine, so there's parking, you can kind of see the back ends of the cars parked underneath there. This is a three-dimensional model. I just didn't print out anything to show the massing. But um, yeah, you would be parking underneath it, and then there'd be a floor all above it. Mm -hmm. So Almost like the um, the apartments behind the, the Capitol, the pavilion building. Actually, in similar in, as far as sectional relationship, right. right? You park in and floor above it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it would just be, is that, is that one or two floors? I think it's parking and then two floors, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. This, would, this would be parking and then one floor. There'd be, there'd be one apartment uh, next to the parking, and then there'd be three up on the, the upper floor. So that would, that would reach out uh, in the back at grade. So, um, it's a little hard to evaluate this, so I, I, I'm going to just characterize this as an observation rather yeah, than sure. a, a concern or anything yeah. like that. But uh, one question I have is how, how do we evaluate the construction of multifamily housing in an outlying area like this when many of our town plan pr priorities have to do with, uh, this is a compact site design, but it's not within a compact settlement pattern. It's kind of on its own, mm -hmm. its own lot. Yeah. Which looks quite right. lovely. Right. Um, so, mm -hmm. so reconciling those things and um, it, when we come to review it, does it meet the criteria that we have to to look at? So I, I can't give you a, a flash review of that right now. I'm yeah. sorry to say, but um, that's a that's a big question I would have. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, as we're yes, yeah, you are fleshing out more of the plan and the plan for the building. It may be worth coming down and going through this the section 3304, the character of the neighborhood, because part of that is also architectural compatibility, which might be part of what... It's not at all what I'm... Not what you're talking about. about? No. Okay. It's the location of the use. Okay, you're... Should okay. multifamily be located in these types of locations? And, and well, I should be very clear that that's not a concern about... Um, that, that's a concern about efficient use of land, not about proximity of multifamily housing to single family housing. I'm fine mixing that but up. I, yeah, but I also believe that that's, that, that's, that's part of the discussion that's going on with the, with the zoning regulation, but we're also wanting to uh, encourage cottage clusters, which this would be ideal for. 
in all, in all locations? Not all locations, of course. And so I'm questioning what the what locations but, but are certain, suitable for cottage clusters and whether open areas there's there's a place for. I, that's part of my question is whether on undeveloped land is where we just how far out we want them. Which is why there's such a lively debate. So it's happening right now. So your timing yeah. is 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 perhaps challenging. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is going to be. I mean, but it is in a residential 9,000 neighborhood, you know, so it's, it doesn't, it makes sense to me to say we have a 1.1 acre parcel, but we, this is not an area appropriate for clustering, so essentially you can't have multifamily, and then it would incentivize either a subdivision to create smaller lots out there if you have mm -hmm. a 9,000 square foot mm -hmm. lot size or 9,000 square foot per unit. It seems like if you're going to have a square footage per unit um, set out in the zoning regulations, that and and that's why I was curious where this. If the, I mean, this well, more than an acre lot has been there for 40 years. Um, presumably, that's an indication that at least, I mean, depending on how much. Certainly, if you take the whole acre into consideration, that that's an indication that this is an appropriate place for four units of, of housing development. Maybe you take to track all the unbuildable space and you get down to three, but still seems to me like under the regulations there's an indication that three units is appropriate in this location, provided again that it's, you actually go through the conditional use right. standards to show that the, the particular proposal will not have an adverse impact on the surrounding area. But I think from the start to say, maybe we don't want three units of clustered residential development in a 9,000 per unit area on more than an acre. That was a long way to say a pretty short thing, but I like to hear myself talk sometimes. I've been quiet tonight. Yes. Very it's quiet. Your turn. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One, one board member's thoughts for what they're worth. Probably not much. It's, good. it's helpful. Any, any comment is helpful. This chair. Sure. Well, and, and I guess I'll just tack on to that because it is an ongoing discussion that I think it's unresolved what exactly our powers are in character of the neighborhood um, and that ultimately, you know, we're a zoning board and we have to ad adhere to certain standards. Um, but if there aren't standards, that puts us in a difficult position um, where we're asked to substitute sort of um, judgment about what should or shouldn't be built, you know, sort of to Im implement what our version of the of the plan might be a larger sort of city plan of development. I mean, uh, at, at the end of the day, we're tasked with really uh, applying specific standards in in the bylaws. And so I think, you know, that's just something we haven't had to fully flesh out. So that's one of the unknowns. It certainly, you know, does auger for, you know, some type of conversation with the Planning Commission to see, um, you know, where some of their changes are going. Because I think this is a different project if the steep slope density calculations change. I mean, even beyond simply what you're proposing here, um, if you were able to count more of that 1.7, 1.17 acres, you might have different thoughts about how to how to use this property. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because it's it's uh, yeah it's three uh, three. I'm actually financially. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to make it work. Right. It's That's it's a, yeah. once I get the four, I can yeah. make it financially. But, um, well, and you know, it, I mean, I think part of it too, and this is this is more on the economic side. Is you know, what is the demand for a one bedroom? unit this at this point from the downtown is, yeah. the, is there a demand for that that's an issue and i mean that's not anything we decide i think that's an issue yeah. from the standpoint of yeah. marketability yeah i mean a lot of folks who are in one bedrooms 
are going to want to be closer to downtown. Yeah. I mean, there is like trails through Murray Hill, and you can get down to the. Oh, I, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. sure there is. Nice, right. Pretty hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty hardy. That's for sure. <laughs> not that kind of walkable. But yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't have a car and you needed to get downtown, it's hikeable to town. Yeah. 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 Hikeable to town. Yeah. 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 Hikeability yeah. metric. It's, it's probably a 20 minute walk. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I will say, if the regulations require us to exclude all that area and it stays as it is, and it says three units, then it's we have almost no power to say. Right. You right. can say like, like I really I can't do it without four, and we could say, well, okay, you can't do it without, you know. Right. Right. Like, yeah. No, I, I understand that. I mean, I, I say that just in honesty and yeah. putting it all. No. Out no. Yeah. That, absolutely. But, uh, and so that's what I, I, where I think the, the, yeah, the planning the commission is. Yeah. Is, yeah. And the, you're lucky that it's a time when yeah. they're actively <laughs> looking at that because. Yeah. Right. Otherwise, um, you know, there's much more difficult to change the regulations to accommodate something. So. Yeah, no, it is it's uncanny timing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's good. Well, um, maybe. You said you wanted to get into right. this, so it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. You, yeah. you're, you're diving discussion. into the deep end. Um, so I don't know. Is there anything else that we could help you with? Um, I just had uh, oh, one no. question. Yeah. Uh, so when it comes to the uh, restriction, how the slopes restrict the density, um, if one were to go the say infill housing and apply for the bonus of affordability, um, mm -hmm. or uh, you know that's thirty four oh one, you know if the unit's affordable, you can get up to fifty percent um, reduction. Uh, if that's it's so much open space per unit, um, I'm just. Uh, Oh, so you're talking about a P in the PUD? In the PUD rules. section, yeah. Yeah. PUD. But that's not a PUD. Yeah. 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 No, I, didn't, I know that's not what's being proposed. I'm just sort of pointing to it. It almost seems like it's along the lines of what's, what we're talking about with infill housing. And well, I think it, it is a, a little bit only. I mean, obviously, it's... it's um, I think you start off with the lower density. You know, you, you, you subtract out the 30%, and then you get some of these bonuses if you meet the PUD development standards. Um, but I think you have to start, at least, because that's a, the, the calculation about density is, is really a primary calculation in, in, in the beginning. Um, but with the PUD, PUD, I understand that it could potentially, I mean, if I subtract that, like, let me do three units. If I can get a fifty percent increase for affordability, or I'm not sure what those regulations well, it's, are. But it, yeah, it's under thirty-four. Oh, it's chapter uh, three forty, and it's okay. you know it talks about infill housing development, and um, it Would applies. This be considered infill? Well, that's that's. I mean, you look at the you look we at the. We make different opinions <laughs> of that. Uh, this is what it says: applicability. Infill housing developments are permitted in the riverfront mixed-use residential, residential fifteen hundred, residential yeah. three thousand, residential six thousand, and residential nine thousand districts, on parcels not more than two acres in size. Yeah. And I mean, that's that's what the standards are. Um, and so it's in, if interpreted with respect to the purpose, the first item on the purpose is to encourage an increase in the amount of housing generally and affordable housing in particular located in downtown and surrounding neighborhoods. So that, no, that gives a little like bit of uh, locational I mean, this isn't, it's not devoid from residential neighborhood. I mean, it but is it a neighborhood that's surrounding downtown? I think could be debated. Why well, don't I don't? I think it was downtown. I mean, the purposes don't set the standards. Right. Uh, yeah. But they got the interpretation of the standards. They right? they may, but the the standards are infill housing developments are permitted, and then it lists the districts that's permitted in. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the purpose <laughs> maybe why they allow it in these districts, and it, but that's not. You know, I don't think that necessarily tells us that we can make choices within those as we as a board, because otherwise, I think we get into that debate you started to have with Ryan, which is it wasn't what a is debate. A, sorry, <laughs> it was an exploration. It, initial yeah. skirmish. Yeah, no, um, come on. Of whether or not uh, you know this is this is one of the surrounding neighborhoods. I, um, are I mean, all the neighborhoods surrounding downtown? I mean, oh, rural isn't. Really? Or even that? Even, mm -hmm. I would, there are some rural. Actually, I mean, rural that's where I come in. I mean, I'm like, Montpelier is a growth district in and of itself. Like, 
Well, sure. All the surrounding yeah. towns can be rural. Sure. Uh, right off of Northfield. That's what it's turning into. Yeah. Look at. Uh, yeah. I guess the only reason I brought the PD. <laughs> no, I appreciate. It. We can. Uh, I, I like what Kay said about the you know the character of the neighborhood description. I feel like um, but yeah. with the PUD, we have a list of things where it's like the applicant is giving something in return for you know getting something. And, and I, I don't know. It just seems like that's a maybe anyway. a, a more palatable uh, approach uh, if mm -hmm. this were to go forward. Yeah, yeah. And this does seem like a you know the fact that you're keeping it very small in scope, having four you know modest units in a single building keeping what's currently undeveloped, most of it still in development. It has a lot of similarities with it, mm -hmm. what you think about as a, a PUD. Yeah. So something yeah, to look right. into. It's just a small scale. Almost. Right. Yeah, I mean, have, have Don look at this if okay. you're working with him. I mean, yep. part of this is that's something that's existing now. If you're, it sounds like you're not on like an immediate timeline. You know, you may want to find out and sound out the the planning commission to see uh, are there changes coming down the pike. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I may have to go a yeah. two track. Yeah, yeah. you uh, may have to. Just, yeah, I've got like seventy days left. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's so I guess the what we're leaving you with is is um, it's advisable to take a close look at. at uh, the bylaws so you can understand how we'd be constrained yeah. as we were looking at this project. Yeah. Yeah. And I think keeping in mind what Kate said is that it looks like you're in a district that really hasn't contemplated the development of this particular lot just mm -hmm. by how they've described, you know, how they permit additional infill development. And right. and given that, I think it's, it's a legitimate question for the Planning Commission, yeah. right? So um, the way I would suggest that you phase it is by taking some time with the bylaws so that when you go to the Planning Commission, you can kind of have a, a list of, of, uh, of questions for them. And it is, it is in the uh, Murray Hill neighborhood. Um, so. And we haven't even gotten to the point where the Murray Hill neighbors chime in as to their feelings. Yeah, about. there's the only there's one house. Actually, you can kind of no, you can't see it. It's up the hill. It's nice. It's pretty. It'll be pretty screened no matter it is what. Very, yeah. yeah even, so so even though they're a, a butter, they, they may not feel as they, I, they may not have the motivation to do so. Well, because yeah, it'll be down the hill nice. and in the woods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. I really think it's. It, it, in general, I think other than the curb cut most of the year, even during the winter, I don't think you would ever know this. So that would be the question there, too, is if it's near that curve, how close it is, you know, how the cur how safe the curb cut will be ultimately. Yeah. But that will be. The curb uh, cut is it's pretty straight through there. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so it's okay. It's yeah, before the curb. And the drives, there's good separation between the drive and the other side of the street. Mm -hmm. so That's great. I did look at that. So. Good. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Thanks. Well, good luck. Thanks for being open to reflections <laughs> and observations. <laughs> and thanks for being interested in providing housing. Yeah, no, I'd love to do it. Yeah, it's a fun process. So I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know, can you pay a parking ticket somewhere now? <laughs> right at the, yes. Police station. You can just go to the police station. They're open. You can't, okay. Yeah. I believe so. Right. They're always oh, really? open. Actually, I think there's a sign that says okay. Fayette City Hall. Yeah, I think you have oh, to pay okay, a Okay, never mind. There's a drop there's a box little, out there. There's a drop can, box. Can you do it in the drop you box? Can. Okay. I, okay. Yeah. Pretty sure. I've got a couple. Do you want to pay a couple oh, more? Man. I can <laughs> grab it in my car. <laughs> <You're doing laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got a few tickets you can drop off. <laughs> there, was, oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> there was a certain Vermont Supreme Court justice who used to plaster his walls with part Montpelier parking tickets until he was up for retention and then suddenly <laughs> they all got paid. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Our, that's the only other business apart from announcing that our next regularly scheduled meeting is Monday, April 1st, 2019, 7 p.m. Same forum, same members, hopefully. I'll make a move to adjourn. Motion by Kevin to adjourn. Do second. I have a second? Second by Ryan. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.